Welcome back to the second episode of the Win series. The greatest invention I've made, for myself at least. So, in the previous episode, in case you haven't watched it, I leave a link to it. We discovered how this works, the fact that the new method is essentially a initializer, however, you could say worse, but it does what I want it to do. Uh, and we left at testing and how I use it. Today I'll show the rest of the methods if the time allows. So let's look at time. Oh, what? Is that a clock that Rava made? Yeah, my dear friend Rava made this amazing clock. Uh, I'm not sure if I can give you the link yet. Not sure how GitHub uh, handles many people, or at least a few people at once uh, on a website, but it looks really nice. So, around 20 minutes, I feel like. If we go over that, uh, there's going to be another episode of this series. So, let's get into it. First of all, uh, I'm sure <laughs> you probably didn't hear that, did you? Well, 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 since you didn't, uh, here's the code. You can guess what it does. If you don't want to uh, write this all out yourself, you can go to lib-v2 other.hk. I leave a link to my profile under every video. I've gone on too many tangents already. So, you know about when close, when uh, minimize, and uh, when maximize. Well, turns out they are bad. A bit loud, you could say, to say they're bad, but yeah, they kinda are. So, each one of them is more error prone and not as fast as the other variant that I actually use. Post message. What does this do? It posts a message to the window that you provided to close, essentially. Um, forcibly closes the window. Not that forcibly though, uh, the windows that come up when you try to close an unsaved window will still come up. So for example, in GIMP, uh, you work on some project and you try to close, the, oh, you have unsaved changes, window will still come up. So this post message me uh, method is just better, essentially. Let me train to actually show you this uh, boom, here it is. <laughs> so using post messages better. Uh, the close method is used at least a few times. Yeah, uh, the non-static part of it is for when I already have a win object and I can just operate on that window specifically without the need to provide the win title again or anything of that nature. However, sometimes I actually want a static version of it, maybe for a hotkey that just always closes the current window, uh, or maybe I want to specify a one-off win title that I'm not gonna use anywhere else. Well, I'm gonna use the static version. What's the difference? Uh, so in win, you would first have to create the object with the parentheses and then specify your things. Uh, so let's make win title, win title, uh, and then we do close. Usually you have even more, and uh, when win title is just wait what uh, is just a. This is kind of too much for something this simple. So we can just do this. And since by default it's A, meaning the current window, 
that's all the code that we need. So coming back, uh, this is not the only method that has a static version. There's also one for restore down and maximize and minimize. The static versions work the same way for each one of them. It just creates a new object uh, providing the win title of the one that we passed as a parameter and then does the close. Uh, so now, as you, uh, now since you know how it works, I won't cover, cover the static versions. Restore down, what does it do? Essentially, it clicks this button on every window. Uh, even if you don't see this button, it actually exists. So let's try pressing Alt Space. And I have it disabled actually. So let's, dis uh, let's enable it. Uh, so I can more easily explain what I mean by all that. Here it is. So when I press Alt Space, this window comes up. Alt Space does that for every single window or your on your machine. So even if you don't see these buttons, they still exist uh, in the window. So restore, move, size, minimize, and maximize, and close. All of these buttons can be essentially pressed by using post message, which is exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, the specific post message you'll have to search for yourself, but uh, you can also just look at what I have here. So OX112 is essentially to this window, to this group of buttons, press this button, which is restore. Um, yeah, and it does this. Why is this useful? Generally not, but it comes in clutch in the later method. So maximize uses the same method to use maximize. So it was here. Now we do maximize and it's like this, full screen. Pretty simple, works the same way. Uh, minimize uh, picks this button or this button minimizes the window. Here it is, my clock. The clock that I use, it's not my clock. I, wasn't, I didn't make it. I wanted to have a hand in making it. I end up not doing so. It's written uh, in concepts that I'm not familiar with, like web design and stuff. It's really cool. Um, I love it. So we want, went over the, I guess, low level uh, function abstractions that are used either directly when you want to have a hotkey that maximizes the current window, for example. And for me, that's window, windows down and windows up. Now you might say that, hold on, those are already hotkeys on Windows. And you would be right, but there's a catch. So let's say you want to press Windows right arrow to move your window here. Often what you would find yourself uh, in is you press Windows right and either your window is on the left for some reason or uh, a window comes up where you have a selection screen of all the windows you could open side by side. That's a pretty cool feature. So why am I not using it? That's because it only appears sometimes. It doesn't appear always. And that's incredibly annoying. So I reprogrammed the way windows jump uh, into positions. So once it's not minimized, it just jumps. Uh, if it's maximized, it first, first we use restore down to click this, and then we move it into the correct position. But I'll come back to why and how a bit later. 
this is like the last method in the class. Activate. Now this is a lot for just activating. I touched upon these two lines uh, in my previous video. So you already know that not, not only do we want to activate a window, we also want to wait for it to become active to make sure everything is as tight as possible. Now, what is this? Uh, essentially, say you have two VS Code windows, and let me actually show this off. Fuck. Hold on. Yeah, that's better. So I have another VS Code window. What I expect to do when I press Alt-A, which is my hotkey for uh, the app function of VS Code, so here I am, I want to minimize this. Uh, I'm still in VS Code, then minimize this. And then as I continue pressing, every time I activate a VS Code window, it's a different VS Code window not the same one. And for that purpose, uh, this code exists. Before I needed to do that, there was no need. But without this, what would happen is this window, well, this window would always activate, and this window would not be. And then once I somehow activate this window, probably with my mouse, which, as you can imagine, I'm a Vim user, I don't want to do, uh, then only this window will be, like, activated by the hotkey. But in this situation, every two times I get a different window, which is what I want. How does this work? So we get a list of all the win titles that match the win title. This win title, for VS Code at least, let's go and look at it. So Visual Studio Code, HKXA, Code XA. So every VS Code window, well, not exactly every, which is good, uh, but basically these big windows. So, there are currently two. This one and this one. Cool, we got win titles, which is an array that now contains two elements. Okay, but if it didn't find anything, then there's no match for the win title, there's nothing to activate. We return false, meaning we didn't activate. Okay, now this stack, what does this mean and why does it need to exist? Before then, this was just negative one to mean the last item in the array that we got. But sometimes the oldest window is the second one and sometimes the oldest window is the first one. I don't really know. It depends, you wouldn't believe it, on the app. I'm pretty sure. It depends on the app and not on the uh, order of displaying stuff. So for some app, it's going to be negative one, uh, meaning, hold on. For some apps, it's going to be negative one, meaning the last element in the array, which in this case is the second element, and for others it will be the first element in the array, so the first element. This is why this stack exists. This is so you can change what you pick depending on the app or anything else really. Uh, I don't know the extent of this issue, but I fixed it with this stack, having uh, minus one, I think, for VS Code. Let's see. 
it has the default, uh, which is which is one. It was my negative one for different ones. So yeah, we get win title, and then as you saw, we win activated and win weight active. So we wait for it to become active and return true because we did activate it in the end. Uh, this function is amazing. I absolutely love it. It does what when activate does, but also brings in more features, which I expect when activating a window. Minmax, probably my favorite function maybe of all time. I guess after app, which we'll get to. So this is pretty readable uh, in what it does. If the window doesn't exist, uh, then cool, we do nothing. But things turn around when the window is, when the window exists. So if it exists, is it active? In this case, make it up, make it not active. Is it not active? Make it active. So it's essentially a toggle uh, for the activity, I guess, of the window. So currently, VS Code is active. I press the, the hotkey that essentially does min max, and now it's minimized. So not active. Now, when I press Alt A again it's activated again. Well, a different one. But that's uh, the activate method running its magic. So this is really useful as well. Run. Uh, it doesn't look too clean, I realize that. But let's go through it bit by bit. So first of all, what the what is the idea of this function? To run something. Doesn't work on links, only files, or rather apps. Apps and another thing that will come back to, I'm pretty sure. Alright, I'll spoil it. Folders. So, first of all, if the window that we are trying to run already exists, then what are we doing? We already have it. We don't need to run it. We we'll would need to activate it then. So we return false, meaning we do nothing. Okay, so now we know that it doesn't exist. To run an application, we need a, a path to the exe. So if if we didn't set an exe path at all, or rather it's an empty string, or it's unset, I guess. I guess that works the same exact way, more or less. Then we uh, display an error that says, yo, you are an idiot. Specify something. Cool, now we know that we specified a path. Whether or not it's correct, we'll know later, but uh, we know that we specified at least something. This is essentially for mm, so when you use this, you understand what's wrong. This is a very easy check to make for something this important. So here it is. Now we actually run. So what is exe path? It's the full path to the exe or whatever file that you want to actually run. Start in. Well, let's actually look at the parameters. Working there, you can run an application from some directory. So here I am. In my terminal, uh, I'm in the programming folder. Well, this is not Windows, this is Bash or other Z shell, but let's pretend. So I do run, or I guess start it would be. 
Um, oh, it supposedly works. No, it doesn't. <laughs> well, that's funny. So, I can do, I can start some something like notepad.exe and it would run from this directory, the directory of C programming. It doesn't matter at all and it doesn't matter for most applications, but for some, like OBS, fuck OBS, for that it matters. To launch OBS programmatically, you need to start it in some folder and let's actually look at it. So we go to OBS, here's the starting. We have to be uh, in this folder to run OBS because of some resources that it has to use and for some reason it uses a relative path rather than an absolute one. Sure then. So I just specify start in to mean run from this folder. And here I am. Cool. What are run options? So let's look. Uh, we go to properties, maximized, minimized and normal window. This is this essentially. How does the window look when it is run? So you run VS Code, does it look like this? Or does it always look like this? So maximized, essentially. You can specify this in run options. However, by default, it's max, meaning it's maximized. If you want, uh, if you want it to be minimized, not meaning this, but meaning this. Confusing terming, which I realize, but that's Windows for you. You can use min, but obviously don't don't change the default unless you like most of your apps to be minimized by default. I mostly use this class for stuff like apps. So this, like this. What am I running right now? I'm running Spotify. All right. So that's why I leave it at max. Cool. And now we win weight. Remember activate where we did this magic. Well, we're doing the same thing. So we activated and then waited for the window to become active. Now we run and wait for the window to exist. We don't wait for it to become active yet. Uh, that is done separately by activate. But we do wait for the window to exist. In when wait, there is a parameter, timeout. Essentially, wait for the window to exist for how long? By default, for me at least, it's a ridiculous 120 seconds because GIMP loads far too slowly and Steam too, especially when it needs to um, like install updates and the like. Technically, what I should do here is uh, like change this to well, maybe five seconds and change the wait time uh, for the apps that take much longer because usually five seconds is more or less enough I guess but I'll do that later I think maybe essentially this is a default which is kind of stupid and you should change it <laughs> uh, here we have the win title as usual and this exception you've seen this in a couple of places already uh, quite a lot. What is this? Well, every time you have a win title to specify, you also have exception. Meaning, try to find this win title, but only if it doesn't have the exception. I provide a way to 
specify this as well because sometimes uh, what example could be good uh, can think of one but essentially say VS code so try to match Visual Studio code but only when not in this folder for example well here it doesn't have it which is why I think it's a really good idea to specify both the name and the HK underscore exe. Wow, it jumped. Uh, but if it did, you would use exception to make sure it doesn't capture this window if you don't want to. Now, at this point, I violated the rule of uh, solid one of them single responsibility because not only does it run but it also closes something potentially and I realize that it's not the best practice but doing run and close one once exists every time that I need to uh, having to remember that I don't want to do it because usually how I run stuff so let's close Spotify how I uh, run it is actually let's go to my actual hotkey to see how it works so here it is my hotkey alt s that's Spotify when object uh, and does app yes I'm using app which I showed off in the previous video but I'll go over it once again yeah there's quite a lot uh, so uh, I use app which also does min max or rather app doesn't even do run it does run act which we'll get to uh, and it can also do min max so where am I supposed to put close once exists there and okay say I have it there but then I have to also put it into run act so I might as well just put it on the lowest level and for it to only be called if to close is set to anything but an empty string by default it's nothing so you don't have to worry about it uh, or this could be null for example oh I've been doing too much C-sharp uh, unset <laughs> I don't think it matters that much uh, well it's up to you to know on testing I don't really care <laughs> empty strings work just fine in this kind of scenario so this whole thing will, on, will only matter if you actually set to close. Now what is to close? To close is another win title. A win title that you don't want. Let me show this off. I'll write Steam to open Steam. And it'll take its gracious time to of course update what does it keep updating no one knows and as it opens it will actually close the news page it might show off to me and this is exactly what to close is for steam keeps showing some random discounts or the news page or wherever else once it starts I always close that window uh, but I don't have to because I can make auto hotkey do it for me. Wow, I, I understand. I'm pretty good at talking at length, but this is way too long. Is it finally time? Maybe. Almost. This is a lot of time taken just to show something this simple off. Well, would be funny if the page didn't even show up or maybe oh here it is and it's gone so essentially by specifying 
close, uh, well, by specifying to close, I'm giving it a window to wait for and close immediately once it exists. And it does that by close once exists. Now this looks scary, and I'm sorry. I don't know how to say that in any other way. What is all this? You might think, oh, but couldn't you just like win wait for this to close and then I guess uh, win close? Because as you remember, there's a static method. And since win close by default closed is the win title and we want to close to close, that's why you would use static. Uh, variant of close, but why do I not do this? Because um, it occupies the thread. Once you use win wait, it will wait for those 120 seconds until this window fucking appears and a lot of other stuff you might have will break. So, in my situation, this was GIMP. So I open GIMP with GI and then HK. Uh, and it opens the app, all that, all that. And I went waited for some sort of window, I don't really remember which. Uh, so, now, just imagine. Just imagine I'm in GIMP. Steam <laughs> took long enough to uh, launch, so I'm not going to again. So now I am in GIMP and I try to use my terminal again, but it doesn't appear in that situation because it's still waiting for that window to appear. Which is why I created a method that uses uh, set timers to wait for that window and close it. Which is why this looks uh, more complex than it has to be. It's true, it doesn't have to be, but it's, I think, better that way. So, let's uh, go through it by bit by bit. Or will we? No, we won't, because this video is already long enough. If you're interested to see how Close Once Exists works, uh, to get a look at how to use set timers to not uh, occupy the thread and some more things uh, which are actually the more useful uh, stuff in this class then you can come back in the third episode of this series if you enjoyed this episode leave a like uh, type a comment and definitely subscribe I hope you have a good day